Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> I think we are running a little behind schedule, and I have a flight to catch as well. So um, I have a quick presentation. I'm going to try and do a little bit of speed talking and make the key points that I would like to make. So really, the question here is, we are seeing a boom in entrepreneurship, right? It's the new glamorous job to have. And entrepreneurs are sort of demi-celebrities, if you will, right? Somebody getting a Series A, Series B is celebrated, um, and, and entrepreneurship is not a taboo anymore, as it used to be, let's say, 15 years ago. So we are in a good space, but let's take a look at what is the type of entrepreneurship that's happening in the country and where we need to be. So very quickly, the Indian startup ecosystem overview. I, you may all be very familiar with this, so I'm going to move through this rather rapidly. So we are in a good space. The key message here is that we are in a really good space. We're the third largest and fastest growing ecosystem. The number of startups, I mean, this is a moving figure, right? On a daily basis, this is, this is uh, going up. Um, the funding ecosystem is also pretty good. So a lot of money has been invested. VCP funding has really picked up. 2015 was a great year for the startup ecosystem. And again, 2007 has picked up quite well. The angel investment is also very vibrant, which is a very essential part of the ecosystem. And we have a lot of incubators, including, of course, the one here at uh, IIIT MK. And I, of course, also represent an incubator at IIMB uh, called NSR Cell. So there are a number of incubators. So overall, you know, there is a great support system, um, lots of startup activity. Sort of diving into the numbers a little bit, like I said, 2015 was a great year. And again, 2017, we don't have the numbers, but has, has looked very well. And if you look at the, the tech VC landscape, um, you have angel and seed investors, you have early stage investors, as well as growth stage investors. So you have investors catering to the whole um, spectrum of investments that a startup needs. And as my previous speaker, uh, Mr. Arnab pointed out, it's an ongoing process. You need funds all the time. It's the lifeline of a company. And we do have that in this ecosystem, which is great. What we don't see very often, which are hard to come by, are exits. So this is one number that's a little bit worrying about this ecosystem. So if you look at it in, in a span of about two years, there have been a number of very small deals an okay number of mid-sized deals and, and a very small number of large deals. This is a little worrying because you need to finally be able to uh, give returns to the investors so that they can pump the money back um, and make those 4x, 5x returns on their money invested. So is this happening? Is this happening enough? If it's not happening enough, what's the problem that's plaguing this ecosystem? Why is it not happening? So these are questions that we need to answer. But having said that, by and large, barring a few issues, which I think some of the earlier speakers also brought up, the, the industry academia link not being very up to the mark, there may be some issues, especially in the hardware tech space, et cetera. By and large, we can say that we have a very vibrant ecosystem. Right? So now let's take a look at this. We'll shift gears. We'll say, how innovative are Indian startups, okay? And as is, so, so here's a little quick information, right? So we looked up at the patents. The nine startups by valuation, which are all unicorns, over a billion dollars in valuation, have only 30 patents between them, okay? And when I say startups, I'm not talking about Tejas Networks, that they are a mature company. I'm talking about the more recent uh, companies that we are seeing crop up. Seven of them have zero patents. And if you look at the picture, it's not very different in the next rung of companies. So what I'm getting to here is, patent has traditionally been a very good indicator of innovation, right? It's a very strong proxy for innovation. So going by this number, it seems like we're not doing very well, 
right? So what's going on here? Where is all the money going? What are these companies that are raising money? So where do we spend, uh, stand in the innovation spectrum? So, you know, I'm a professor in a management school, so without a two by two, my presentation cannot be complete, and here it is. So if you were to look at the two axes, you have market, right? So you can have companies addressing the local market, let's say in this case, Indian market, or they could be globally facing. And on the other axis, you have technology. So the company might dabble in exploitative technology, meaning these are not new to the world. The technology exists. They are leveraging the technology. They are adapting it. They are combining it in, in different ways. Or the technology could be what we call exploratory. These are new to the world technologies completely. So if you look at how Indian startups sort of map onto this grid, um, you know, these are famous logos, right? I don't need to go into that. A lot of them are trying to exploit technology for local markets, right? And you also have companies, let's say, a lot of the global SaaS companies fall into this, this uh, grid, where they are, again, exploiting technology but addressing global markets. Now, exploratory. You have a handful of companies, and these numbers are very small, right? The, 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 this doesn't represent what is happening in a proportional manner, but what you see is a very small number of companies that are actually pushing the envelope of technology, right, that are in the exploratory um, space. It's happening slowly but surely, but it's still the numbers are very, very small. So what's happening here? is these are market-driven startups, what I like to call as market-driven. So they're taking an existing technology and applying it to either a local or global market. The ones at the top are technology-led startups. Now, the non-linear growth actually comes in that space. So very often we get asked, why isn't there a Google or a Facebook from India? And that's the reason you need to push towards that end of the spectrum. You know, the more technology-led you are, the higher the chances that you're going to realize that non-linear growth. Now, it's not all bleak. I'm just trying to say that there is a difference in what the companies are trying to do. Nothing wrong with these business models, right? And, and there's a pent-up demand. They're probably doing what they're doing for very good reasons, right? They're low-hanging fruits. They can tap into a large market. That is very good. But at the same time, we also need companies that are tech-led, that are pushing the envelope of technology. And how do we do that? So one way to catalyze innovation, there are many ways to catalyze innovation. So this is just one of the things that my own research uh, revealed, which is based on a certain very specific initiative by iSpirit, which, which, which is a catalyst organization in the software product space, right? So there are three key gears, if you will. So the first is really network formation. And events like this are a great way to make that happen, right? Where you have all the stakeholders in the ecosystem come together, so you form those linkages, and this is very, very important. Um, and then, once you have this networks formed, you can have curated interactions. When I say curated, it's important for people to come together on a thematic basis. Let's say you're facing a problem, you want to talk to somebody who has been through that journey not so long ago, having faced the same issues and overcome the same issues. So can you create curated interactive spaces? What this does is, this, this saves a lot of time rather than every company trying to reinvent the wheel and discover solutions that have already been discovered, there is a fast exchange of information, right? And what that does is it accelerates peer learning. So the knowledge, so there's a lot of tacit knowledge in the ecosystem. Not everything can be documented, not everything can be written out. So what we're trying to say is one way to catalyze innovation is to create an accelerated 
space for diffusion? Can you diffuse the existing knowledge? Now, there are several product companies that have done well, whether it's Tejas Networks, whether it's some other firm, they have the knowledge, but can we create a way for that tacit knowledge to be diffused, whether it is uh, IIIT-MK, whether it is IIM Bangalore, as catalysts. We have a role to play in making sure that these networks are formed. We have a role to play in ensuring that there are curated interactive spaces. You as you know, founders of startups or founders of companies who have done well, you have a responsibility to give back to the ecosystem through these curated interactions by helping other companies accelerate their learning process because we are all in this together, right? We all have to help each other win. And that we can do that by accelerating this innovation process. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And I hope I gave some food for thought. Thank you very much.